All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoka. And check me out on anthonysmoke.com if you like BI and visualization. Uh, today I'm in Power BI. I've got a, a simple dashboard here. I've got some transactional data, uh, mock data from mockaroo.com. Great site if you need test data. We've got a person's name, their gender, what they purchased, uh, a purchase date, and a cost. And yeah, I've got this segmented out by male and female, and you can see the... Uh, the, uh, the trending here by, by gender. But what I want to do, I want to throw in an aging bucket here. So based upon the purchase date, I want to stratify this purchase date into different buckets, right? So if it's uh, 0 to 15 days or 16 to 30 days, uh, 31 to 59 days, I want to I put it into different buckets. So normally in SQL, I would use a case statement, right? That is uh, SQL's way of handling if-then logic. So how do you do that? In, uh, in Power BI. So uh, what we're, we're going to do, we're going to create a new column here, not a new measure. There's there's a difference, right? We'll, I'm not going to get into the nuances uh, here in this video, but uh, just follow along. We're going to create a, a new column and I'm just going to copy this in here. Uh, the case equivalent in Power BI is called switch. So I've got my aging bucket, that's the name of the field I want to create, equal to switch, again, acts like a case. And the first argument that I'm going to pass to the switch is this true uh, function, because I always wanted to evaluate my subsequent expression. So I pass this true in. And so all this is doing is it's looking at the difference between the purchase date, and this is just the nomenclature uh, for purchase date. You see that purchase date dot date, and this data here, that's just the name of the, uh, that was the name of the tab in Excel when I imported this in, uh, and the, the table in the model got the name data. Uh, for your purposes, this, this will be different. It won't necessarily be data, but um, again, we've got purchase date, if that difference between that purchase date and today in days is greater than zero, and the difference between the purchase date and today in days is less than 15, then I'm going to call that 0 to 15 days. Very, very straightforward. Nothing, nothing too complicated there, right? And so we're just going to finish this out. We're going to finish uh, stratifying here. Right, take, take a look at what we've got here. So now uh, I want to do the same thing. If it's between, if the difference is between my dates, uh, and today, purchase date in today in days is greater than or equal to 16 and less than or equal to 30. Then we're going to call that 16 to uh, 30 days, right? And so I want to make sure that I'm not, uh, right, there we go. Let's get rid of that so it's easier to read. So again, we're using that switch statement, which acts like a case, and then we're putting in our different expressions, right? So if this uh, evaluates to true, then it's going to say 0 to 15 days. If it comes down here and this evaluates to true, it's going to say 16 to 30, so on and so forth. We get to the last expression where I don't have an AND function because it's not between two dates, um, or I'm sorry, between two uh, intervals of time here, 31, 59, 16, and 30, 0 and 15. All I'm saying is if it's greater than and equal to 60, then we're going to call it 60 plus days, right? So this should take in theory. Okay, looks like it did. So now I can come back in here and let's pull in a, uh, a bar chart and we can pull in the aging bucket and our purchase cost, right? And as you can see, again, let's do a little quick formatting here on the x-axis. I like to get rid of the, uh, the grid lines, right? And Let's turn on the, oops, let's go back here. Let's turn on the data labels. Let's turn those on and let's increase the font size, right? All right, so as you can see, zero to 15 days, we've sold $184 worth of stuff. 16 to 30 days, $189. 31 to 59 days, 400. And most of the sales have come 60 days and beyond. We got 1,033 there. So. Uh, again, remember that the switch statement is your best friend. It acts like a case. It's a good way of handling if-then logic in Power BI. Personally, best practice, you want to push calculated columns and measure to the source where possible. The closer they are to the source, the higher the likelihood of performance. So I would calculate this in my 
um, in, my, in my source, so to speak. I'd use uh, some sort of a SQL expression to get that into the database before I, before I pulled it in. But anyway, that is how you do aging in Power BI. I want you to take this tip and get out there and do some good things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.